This show is brought to you in part by Bogart Extractors, an industry leader revolutionizing hydrocarbon extraction. Licensed facilities can rest assured that Bogart's certified systems meet all industry standards. They are peer-reviewed by a third-party engineer to ensure your facility and its employees can operate safely. And each stainless steel unit is built and tested right here in the USA. Bogart's functional extractors boast a faster and more cost-effective process with features like hydrocarbon falling films to supercharge evaporation rates, heavy-duty explosion-proof pumps for flammable liquid or vapor, industrial chillers capable of maintaining large tanks of solvent at temperatures well below negative 60 degrees Celsius, and Bogart offers extensive tech support and consultation services. So whether you need to set up an extraction lab from scratch or simply need some replacement gaskets, Bogart is a phone call away at 855-553-3887 or visit bogart.com. That's B-H-O-G-A-R-T dot com. Welcome. You're listening to Casually Baked, the podcast, home base for the can of curious. Thanks for tuning in. It's Time. We had a hard time together, together. Yes, it's a hard time. We had a hard time together. Hi, y'all. I'm Joe, your host and cannabis lifestyle guide. The fall harvest season is my favorite time of year and a great excuse to showcase highly responsible cannabis farmers. I dug deep into the archives for this one, and I think you'll enjoy this conversation with a family who repurposed old logging land into an off-the-grid regenerative homestead. Alpenglow Farms is a DEM Pure Certified Regenerative Farm located in the mountains of Southern Humboldt. Craig and Melanie Johnson have devoted their lives to the fine art of growing a garden and a family. I remember this conversation with them and their two girls like it was yesterday. But I was reminded how time flies when I saw a video on the gram of their eldest daughter driving Craig's truck. Three years later and the things we talked about then still ring true. In a time of heightened uncertainty and growing propaganda, I find my priorities shifting. And as a way to tune out the noise and fear-mongering, I'm making an effort to turn off the electronics and tune into nature. I'm also seeking inward for answers instead of giving away my sovereignty to these quote-unquote experts and authority figures who aren't doing a very good job of earning and keeping our trust. The Johnson family, I watch them stand up for what they believe in, and they speak up on things that matter to them and affect their family and community. I'm excited to share this conversation, originally recorded on November 3rd, 2018. But first, a word from our sponsor, MJ Relief, the muscle rub PhD formulated for what aches and pains you. And this week, we'll hear Melody's story of relief. She and her husband own a construction company. So Melody finds herself wearing a hard hat along with the many other hats of a wife, mom, and business owner. Hey, I have incorporated MJ Relief into my nightly routine. It helps me with my shoulder pains and my lower back pains. I do office work and then sometimes in field work, and it just helps relax those muscles and helps me rest. So I'm very thankful to have it and use it on a daily basis. If you're having any of those aches and pains, I would highly suggest trying it out. It works great and helps me rest well. If you're feeling Melody's pain and want some muscle and joint relief of your own, head over to mjskinrelief.com and order a tube or tin for you and another one for someone you love. That's mjskinrelief.com. And if you're already a fan of MJ Relief, please send a video or voice memo like Melody and let me share your story of relief on the podcast. And if you're more of a writer, Head over to mjskinrelief.com and you can leave a review on the website. Tag at mjskinrelief if you're a social butterfly. 
The Sustainability Roll-Up is presented by OCB Rolling Papers. In perfect harmony with natural, sustainable practices, it's always been the OCB signature to provide the highest quality, responsibly sourced, and sustainably crafted rolling papers. On the latest episode of Roll With Me, I'm joined by Amanda Ryman. She is the founder of Personal Plants, a DIY earth medicine kit and e-learning platform. She is also the VP of Community Development for California-based Flow Cannabis Company. And Amanda is an internationally recognized cannabis expert and public health researcher. After the show was over, she and I kept talking about ways to show support to small farms in the area, and she introduced me to the Good Farm Fund, a Mendocino County-based organization. Good Farm Fund was founded by a group of farmers, local food advocates, and farmers market managers to address some of the most glaring gaps in the food system. The Good Farm Fund programs aim to improve affordable access to fresh, healthy, locally produced food and to give small farmers a boost with modest grants that can make a big difference. They strive to maximize impact and minimize red tape. Their larger aim is to make small, local, and diversified agriculture a common pursuit of all sectors in the community to support economic development, local sovereignty, health, and well-being. As of 2019, the Good Farm Fund had granted over $100,000 to fund 50 farm projects in California's Mendocino and Lake Counties. The Good Farm Fund grant allocates modest grants directly to small local farms to fund specific projects that may include the purchase of building materials, seeds, equipment, or even livestock. These grants are issued by a committee of their peers, made up entirely of local farmers. The grant recipients, they serve on the selection committee the following year. If you know a local farmer that could use some help, see if you can find a similar program wherever you live. And if something like the Good Farm Fund doesn't exist in your neck of the woods, why not you? Be the one to start it. I'll include links and more info in the podcast 208 show notes at casuallybakes.com so you can continue your research. And if you're looking for rolling papers to keep your harmony on high, I trust my flower to OCB. OCB goes all in on the paper making process to deliver sustainable textile papers. No matter which OCB paper you choose, you can be assured OCB only uses natural acacia gum for an always sticks experience. And all OCB papers are vegan, GMO-free, chlorine-free, and dye-free. Of course, you must be 21 and older to buy OCB rolling papers and to follow the natural wonders of OCB on social, at OCB underscore USA. And for you grown-up joint rolling novices, I invite you to learn the craft alongside me. Catch the Roll With Me video series live streaming on the Casually Baked YouTube channel and the highly responsible Canna Consumers Facebook group with replays on the WeedTube and IGTV. Get your Roll With Me starter kit at ocbusa.com backslash baked. You'll get four booklets of OCB and a rolling tray for only $4.99. This bundle is worth 20 bucks, but the rolling skills and street cred we'll earn together, my friend, makes this offer priceless. And because variety is the spice of life, I encourage you to sample the entire line of OCB products and let me know your favorite. Ask for OCB wherever you buy your papers. You'll find links to the OCB special offer and roll with me in the podcast show notes at casuallybaked.com. If you're looking for cannabis parenting inspiration, this podcast is for you. It's also for everyone waking up to the importance of soil health and nurturing our relationship with nature. So smoke them if you got them and settle in for this chat on mixing family, community, and nature to find your Alpine glow. It's time to get casually baked. I got the bottle of wine. I got the West Coast smoke, but I just take one 
I am in beautiful Southern Humboldt, sitting with the Alpenglow Farms family. Got Craig, Melanie, Mahala, and Josephine with me. I'm so excited to get the uh, the scoop on what it's like to be a cannabis farm family in Humboldt. So thank you all for having me here. Hey, thanks for for being here. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And the girls here, y'all are down doing survival training. <laughs> Parents are digging up potatoes and y'all are down there cooking them. I mean, it's impressive. Mm. Thank you. Do you like living out here? Uh, yes, it's very beautiful. And I love um, like being able to eat from our garden and stuff like that. It's pretty amazing. Nice. Nice. What about you, Josephine? Um, I really like it down here because like, I feel like I'm actually alive and like in tune with the nature and we the animals around us. Wow, you are smart girls. I like how connected you are. It's impressive. How did y'all teach them this? I think it's just a matter of uh, living, breathing um, up here in the mountains. Yeah, I don't think it's something that you teach. No, it's uh, learn by example and necessity at times. You know, when, when you're cold up here, you better learn how to make a fire. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Alpen Glow Farms is off the grid. Um, we make our own power, hydro and solar, and uh, we heat your home with wood. And this is a beautiful home, beautiful windows looking out on this amazing land. And I just love everything that you're doing and what you stand for. And I'm just really excited to learn more about how you do it all and do it so gracefully and put out an amazing <laughs> product in the process. I, th I think I like that you said process because I think all of this and what you're seeing is a process. It's not something that just you come and you do and it's done. It's something that you're a part of and you continuously are learning what works and what doesn't work, what feels good and what doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. So it, it's what you're seeing is 15 years. And that's almost a of little love bit. And <laughs> yeah, that's almost a little bit how we navigate our life in general. Uh -huh. And we know what we don't want to do. Yeah. So when you have enough avenues of I've done that, I know I don't want to do that again. Mm -hmm. The path, the next path is pretty clear. <laughs> yeah. So even if it's uncharted. So 15 years you've been on this property. How long have you been at this in total? When did you get started? Um, well, I first came out to Humboldt County on an invitation um, back in 92 or 3. It's a little foggy. But, yeah, so I first put my boots on the ground here 26, 7 years ago. Mm -hmm. And you, Mel? Well, I moved out here with you. So that was 18 years ago. So Craig and I met in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. Um, and we met at the Nomad Yes, on the east side of Milwaukee. On the east side of Milwaukee <laughs> during Harley Fest. Uh-huh. And Craig had a bike and asked me for a ride. and um, She couldn't resist. I <laughs> took the ride. <laughs> and a year later, Craig and I were in a little white pickup truck moving out here. And yeah. that was it. I love it. So you were out here, and then you left, and you made your way to Wisconsin? Exactly. I, had, I took a, a bit of a Humboldt sabbatical for a few reasons. And one of them was to get my knees operated on. I was in my 20s. I was a, chasing a ski career and doing a lot of that and uh, went back to kind of my roots back in Wisconsin mm -hmm. to a situation where I could get a job and insurance. So I spent pretty much a year there, got my knees operated on. Found Melanie, yourself a wife. Found myself a wife. <laughs> And, uh, yeah. I don't we, know if he was looking for a wife, but I think he found, yeah. Yeah. He found a good one. Yeah. I knew the minute she walked out of that bar. <laughs> I That's did. That's so classy. I love that, though. <laughs> he I did. did. I yeah, did. It was did. just, I, we were together from that moment on every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. That yeah. is a good story. That's a long time. Yeah. Yeah, 18 years. Well, and you can just tell, like, when you have that good rhythm and you just can support each other and be great partners, I think that you have to be able to do that to keep what I'm seeing here mm -hmm. moving mm -hmm. and operating. Mm -hmm. And just like we were talking a bit ago, you know, it's four miles yep. up a crazy, mm -hmm. windy, interesting dirt road. I mean, I grew up on dirt roads, yeah. but I was like, yeah, no, nothing like this. Yeah, it's different. But yeah. And like when you're here, you truly are. You are off the grid. You are by yourself. And 
having two daughters, I mean, that seems mm -hmm. like it can be a challenge to, to manage it all and keep your sanity sometimes. Definitely. I'll let you speak to that. Mom. Oh, well, I don't think I want to go down that road exactly. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a blessing and it's a curse, you know, and having that solitude and having nature so in your space and so in your face without distractions is it's been one of the greatest gifts, I think, for all of us um, to really come to know yourself and come to know what's important to you. And it's a privilege to have an opportunity to be in this space and to live this lifestyle. Um, but it's also a choice because you really, in a lot of ways, you know, we chose to be here and we're choosing to be here. With that choice comes, you know, compromise and surrender in some aspects of your life. Yeah. You know, and I think that we are feeling at this point that we've made some good choices because we're starting to see a really beautiful reflection come back. Yeah. And that I think is felt when we're on our property and we're we're in the property and sharing it with people. Mm -hmm. You know, you're starting to really feel like, wow, there there really is a lot of love here. Yeah. yeah and and yeah. Yeah. you know, it's kind of amazing. Are you ready to make bad days a thing of the past? I invite you to explore the why behind the things you do every day that make you feel awesome. In his new book, Make It a Great Day, author Jarrett Robertson shares small ideas you can use to feel your best. So the next time you're looking for ways to improve your day or mood, you're empowered to do just that. Your day can't control you when you follow this roadmap to thrive. Purchase Make It a Great Day on Audible or online at makeitagreatday.ca. In coming out of the green closet with legalization, has helped us open the gates mm -hmm. to our farm. Mm -hmm. And that does br bring out some emotion yeah, it because does. we've had all this hard work for so many years and only been able to share it with our inner subculture yeah. of Southern Humboldt and a very tight knit group of people that you allow and you love and you trust to come to your place. Mm -hmm. Now we're able to open the gate and we're able to have someone like you come up and do an interview in our front yard with yeah, and our show, kids next to us. Our and kids, our, and, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, talking about cannabis in front of young exactly. people. Exactly, <gasps> you know, right, <laughs> right, right. And and it's nice hearing from people when they step onto our place to tell us what it's like because we we almost lose that being here day to day, to day. Mm -hmm. and um, we enjoy sharing. Mm -hmm. It's it's probably been the most amazing part of it at all is is engaging with people on our farm. Mm -hmm. right. And I guess it's a little, you know, surprising at moments for all of us that people are so interested because it's yes. it's just our life. Right. You know, and so when people are, you know, they show interest and then they show like genuine interest, you're kind of like, wow, this is this is interesting to them, I guess. I, I mean, sure, I'll show you the garden or I'll show, you know, and yeah. and then you realize like, wow, I this is different than I guess the way most people are living. You well, know? yes, Which, uh, you know, most people are going up and down the aisles and buying food out of boxes. Mm -hmm. You have a completely off the grid, maintained system. You're using regenerative farming. Mm -hmm. You're teaching your kids Right. Important life skills. Right. And yeah, most people aren't getting that no. stuff. Kids have their faces buried in the iPad or, on, you know, some terrible stuff on YouTube and just like not being out and engaged with the mm -hmm. world and nature. Mm -hmm. Well, we we definitely have the iPads and mm -hmm. we have a grocery store that we visit. We shop aisles. Yes, we shop there's aisles. There's aisles. But, <laughs> but there's a it balance balanced. to it and... And mm -hmm. there is the time to unplug and there is the time to put our hands in the soil and, you know, harvest our potatoes like we were doing today to get mm -hmm. us through the winter or our apples that need to be made into, you know, jam and, and juices and so forth. But but it's a different appreciation, yeah. though, and I think that's what you're maybe alluding to, if I can yeah. say that, you yeah. know, is that we understand how much work goes in to get those strawberries to that store. Pause. Hey, Okay. I got a report. Last one. This is the last time I'm going to be talking about my neck, my back, my neck and my back. But besides feeling looser and freer in my body, I've noticed some other benefits to following along with this Dr. Love CBD relief program. With all of this data tracking, I'm getting way better at noticing the little things. 
I'm honing my ability to identify discomfort and do something about it before it becomes a problem. Whether that's shifting from my sitting to my standing desk or getting up to move my body more frequently and stretching rather than pushing through a project until it's done. I'm drinking more water. I'm adding electrolytes to it. I'm making sure I get out into nature for a couple of hikes each week. I'm getting back to my daily power napping, and I'm clocking eight hours of sleep a night. I got to say, when you write down what you're doing for yourself, it becomes strikingly obvious when you're not doing enough. Practicing whole body wellness is so much more than remembering to take my Dr. Love CBD. It takes daily effort to nurture mind, body, and soul. But damn if it isn't worth its weight in gold. If you need a little guidance and structure to get back on track, the Dr. Love CBD monthly wellness programs, they might be right for you too. I hope by walking you through my journey to finding relief empowers you on your own, whatever that might be. After all, you and me, my friend, we are precious snowflakes. And Dr. Love CBD offers a variety of doctor-designed CBD formulations, CBD beauty products, and complete monthly wellness programs. Each rest, relief, and balance box comes with a two-month supply of CBD plus supplements, a detailed program guide, and a tracking journal. All of Dr. Love's CBD products are made in America with the highest quality ingredients and sold at fair prices so more people can have access. And this month, during October, if you use promo code BAKED, you'll receive a huge 20% discount on Dr. Love's CBD programs and products. Shop and learn more at drlovecbd.com. That's D-R-L-O-V-E-C-B-D dot com. I'll keep walking the walk and sharing the love, and I hope you'll join me. All right. Back to our chat with the Johnsons. We know how much energy it takes for for all of these processes to happen because we are just a little bit part of a process. Right. And usually we find that ours tastes better. (laughs) Yes. Well, and I also have to say that living somewhere where we didn't have so much fresh food. I grew up in ranching country, and when I was a girl— you eat a lot of vegetables and stuff that come out of a can. Mm-hmm. And there's other things on the ingredient list that you don't know what it is. And right. I think that when you are in an environment like this and you you know exactly what's going into the food that you're eating, then when you go to the store, you probably read labels. Right. You know, you make sure that you're not buying things with high fructose corn syrup in them. Right. Living like this makes you more mindful in so many more areas of your life. Mm-hmm. I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and you know, it makes me it makes me think of choices. You know, that you're saying, you know, that was your choice. That was your option. And when you see it from a different perspective, you start realizing that there's different choices when it comes to things. And so now you can go into a grocery store and see the, quote, conventional, mm-hmm. and then, quote, the organic, right? And so that comes down to whether it's our food that we're talking about or even talking about our cannabis. Mm-hmm. There's choices in these products that are coming out to the market. Absolutely. And it's neat to have those choices. It's it's a privilege to have those choices and to get that out to other people like there's a choice. Yeah. You know? Well, and, and too, with the regulation of cannabis, now someone can go into the store Mm -hmm. and say, I'm looking for a daytime Mm -hmm. option or I need something for sleep Mm -hmm. or I need something for my anxiety, where before you just got whatever was given to you and you might not even know what it was called and you figured out how it made you feel Mm -hmm. after you Mm -hmm. used it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and in in addition to that, you, you have so many choices now because now you can shop uh, the Dempier farms, mm-hmm. you know, the farms that are Dempier certified like we are and many. Now explain that to me. Yeah. So we're a Dragonfly Earth Medicine certified. And Josh and Kelly from that founded Dra- Dragonfly Earth Medicine realized early on that there wasn't a certification for cannabis mm-hmm. because organic certification is, a, you know, federally uh, regulated certification. So they came up with one as a baseline and you need to match certain criteria, uh, provide some closed loops, education back into your community, um, you know, uh, best practices and nice. and um, 
Uh, and and it gives it gives a baseline for a consumer consumer to mm-hmm. walk in and see that dragonfly seal mm-hmm. and know what they're getting. Right. Got it. Okay. I'll need to include links to their stuff on the show notes too, so other people can. Yeah, educate and, themselves and on soulful. it so they can be looking for it. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And Soulful is a big supporter. Soulful is one of our dispensary partners. Yeah. in Sebastopol, and Eli, the owner of that shop, sources almost all Dragonfly Earth Medicine certified mm-hmm. or biodynamic, mm-hmm. Demeter certified. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are some of his base criteria. Um, so when you walk into a shop like that, you know that almost anything that falls into your your bag or your basket mm-hmm. is going to be good yeah. quality, but also certified. So there's a baseline of mm-hmm. an understanding of what you're getting. Yeah, And just being able to have that option of buying and supporting a farm that's values match your values. Yes. And that's Which important. is that's so important, important to some people. for women. Well, yeah. especially for women. Like, mm-hmm. I've been in marketing for almost 20 years or 20 years. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you want to capture an emotion with someone. Right. And whenever you're advertising to them and as media gets more sophisticated, so do consumers. We've learned that you have to be trusted by mm-hmm. the consumer. Now it's not like, how do I get their attention? It's like, how do I build trust with this person? Right. right. And that's really important for female shoppers and you know, you guys produce some of my favorite flour. And that was one of the things when I first went into Soulful when they were building it, where I was like, this is going to be so nice because I will be able to refer someone to that dispensary and feel good that right. anything they get mm-hmm. is going to exactly. be okay for them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's going to mm-hmm. be their willingness to experiment to find w- how it works best for them. Right. But I know I'm not going to feel like an a-hole by right. referring them mm-hmm. to that establishment. It's, it's part of their muddy shoe sourcing, they call it. Eli, before he even opened the shop, he had boots on the ground here and all the farms he's, he sources from. He's and a smart huge. dude. Yeah. yeah. So that, that building those relationships with farms and farm families. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You well, know. you're creating an intimacy, too. Yeah. And I think that's really important because this medicine is intimate. It's yeah. very intimate for the individual. It's in- in- intimate for the people that are buying it for other individuals, mm-hmm. you know, and you want that that feeling, that emotion, that trust that comes with that intimacy. And you can get that when the people that you are, the you know, the dispensaries that are representing you are actually here, mm-hmm. eating with you, drinking with you, spending time with you and your family on your farm. That's real. Yeah, you know, and you can you can feel that authentic feeling. I think when you go into those dispensaries, that keep that as a priority, right? And then the other thing that's really helpful for consumers is Instagram these days. I mean, by giving a follow to Alp and Glow Farms on Instagram, mm-hmm. you get a window into our farm mm-hmm. yeah. and our lifestyle. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think that's more what it is. It's you that's definitely huge. are doing education, but I think that it's it's yeah. it's a window into. Yeah, and, Our world. you know, and that's been a difficult thing for me. You know, I manage my own social media plus client social media. Mm-hmm. And and so a lot of times at the end of the day, mine is the one that suffers because I'm like, I don't even care what I'm doing. Right. No, nobody else is going to care. Like, I just can't do it. Mm-hmm. But when you when I am doing an interview with someone, I go and check out their social feed to be like, okay, what's their vibe? Mm -hmm. What are they all about? Mm -hmm. Because you can't tell so much about a good brand, somebody who's truly being authentic. You Mm -hmm. can tell Mm -hmm. a lot about them by by checking that out. For us, we we made a choice that Alpenglow Farms is our one and only. And we made a choice a while back that, you know, first we were like, okay, it's only going to be farm things. And then it's like, well, that's not the full because this isn't view. our farm, you it's know. This family is too. what's that? It's family too. Mm-hmm. This is our homestead. Yeah, you know, this is where my children were born, where they were raised. You know, and how could we not include that? Because that's not separate from our farm, right? That's you know? completely it's, part of the story. Yeah, it's, when someone sees us growing potatoes at the you know in the root zone of our cannabis plants, and we're eating that as a family, they're going. Okay, so there's obviously no pesticides, there's no fungicides, there's, 
you know, yeah. nothing harmful because the family's eating. Yeah, they're feeding from the this soil. to their kids. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> God. It's real like that blows away any certification. <laughs> right, it's mm. the truth. Mm-hmm. And so, how was that? With you know, as the girls are growing up and becoming aware, obviously, you know, they became aware before January of this year. Mm-hmm. How how did you keep cannabis as just a way of life? How did you normalize that for them and get them to be a part of it and understand? Well, one thing we should probably back up for a second is we've had Prop 215 sure. for t- 20 years. 22 years. Oh, yeah. Right? Gosh. Yeah. Time yeah. flies. Mm-hmm. So, you know, our kids are, you know, our oldest daughter, Mihaela, is 12. So, you know, that's been around forever. Yeah. Essentially, when you're talking and about And I a feel life like, like people were still, though, you know, a little bit in the cannabis closet with Prop 215 mm-hmm. because, you know, it was like, OK, it's legal, but like, you know, yeah, I didn't know how farmers exactly. felt. Yeah. yeah. And I think every farmer is different. Every family is different. Um, what works for some families don't work for others. And you have to just honor and respect those differences. I feel that Craig and I always wanted to be completely open about who we are to our children at all times. Mm-hmm. And so if we can't be our authentic selves in front of our children, then we maybe need to look at our authentic selves. Yes. And so it was always normal. It was always a part of our life because we feel comfortable with what we're doing. We feel comfortable with the life that we're giving them. And that's the farm that's the farming and the living with it on the farm aspect of yeah. it. That's mm-hmm. the walking past a plant. That's mm-hmm. the, you know, the nurturing and caring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think in just the honest education, what we yeah. learn about cannabis, we pass along to our children. So they also are understanding and learning it, you know, as we are. Yeah, we we openly have talked about, you know, the the I guess, you know, we could go down the wormhole a little bit. And that is cannabis being a gateway drug. That mm-hmm. is tackling all the stigmas. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. let's say they do try cannabis at some point and they're like, whoa, I'm not addicted. I'm not these mm-hmm. other things. Well, what else were they not honest about? Heroin and all these other things. That's the same, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not, right? So we've mm-hmm. been very clear with the differences mm-hmm. and the telling of the truth mm-hmm. about the effects of all these different things. But there was a definite conversation when we did the Emerald Magazine. Yes. And it was a conversation. You girls are more than welcome to talk about that. But that was a conversation going, so here we are. This isn't a Southern Humboldt safe community where, you know, we love and support each other. This is going to be going out there. And how do you both feel about that? And that was a real conversation for our family Mm -hmm. because we wanted to make sure that they were okay with the world knowing. Right. Because that's a big step. Yeah. Mahala, how did you feel about that? Uh, To be honest, I don't remember much. It's a little blurry, but... (laughs) um, That was a year ago? Yeah. Did um, your friends, did, I mean, did your friends see it or did you show it to your friends? Um, Were you proud of it? A few people in my class um, saw the magazine and they were wondering about it. And I told them that our family does have a cannabis, cannabis farm and they, they said their dad did too, which was really great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always nice to find your tribe, <laughs> even at school, yeah. right? At, what grade are you in? I'm in seventh. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and those are those are the tricky years too. Up until February, I was living in like a basement unit below my friend who was a single mom with two teenagers. Mm-hmm. You know, I went through the tween stage with one of them and I'm like there's a lot happening in that age group and you know, yeah. and it's so important for them to be armed with mm-hmm. the right information and feel empowered to speak about mm-hmm. things. So that they can squash stigma or they can make Mm -hmm. sure that their friends don't make bad decisions. And I think because we've always been honest, but they this is just our lifestyle that they could feel confident and secure within themselves about this lifestyle. So they didn't have to feel weird about Mm -hmm. anything deeper than like, okay, well, here we go. I'll answer the question. But to them, I think they realize that it's more than just cannabis. I mean. Yeah. Right. And and I think, you know, Josephine, did you have an experience with that too? Um, I don't think so. When when the magazine came out, did Did any of your friends see it? I don't think so. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, some of the conversation when we before we did that photo shoot was, you know, I remember uh, that cover. Yeah. 
and you know other girls going to be you know in the garden or whatever and and if, if i remember right josephine was in the pumpkin patch yeah and mahela was in the dahlia garden mhm nice so what all do y'all have out here what all are you growing just about everything um we have blueberries beets what else do we what you name what everything you can think of josephine um potatoes beets um mushrooms mhm um pumpkins squash zucchinis um, zucchinis any tomatoes yes tomatoes any herbs yes. lots of herbs what are you guys cooking today um potatoes <laughs> potatoes yes purple potatoes we have a lot of potatoes at the farm this year yeah we have a few buckets <laughs> well right it's now. that it's the right it's the time right it is well the time. potatoes are part of our bartering too yeah. <laughs> we, we traded some about 20 pounds of potatoes for some cow manure yesterday to yeah we did that didn't yeah yeah to close <laughs> some close some loops on the farm that's part of what we try to do we don't we don't want to go out and purchase inputs we yeah. try to build relationships in our community and and close loops where we can nice mm -hmm. and so right now you've all the plants are up because it's harvest so we're all in the next phase so right now you're getting the soil ready for right we're soil round. building and building cover crops and we also have our next planting of like uh the girls were harvesting some green beans today and potatoes and we have some radishes we need to pull and this summer this late fall autumn we're having we're going to be able to plant some more uh root crops as well very nice mm. So, girls, what's your favorite part of living out here? Um, my favorite is probably the view. It's pretty ma amazing. <laughs> the view. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. It is a great view. Yeah. Not too shabby. What about you, Josephine? Um, that we have like so much food that we are able to just like pick things out of the garden and just eat them for dinner. I love that. Yeah, that that once again, that's privilege. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone has an opportunity to have space and land to grow food, yeah, you know? And so it really is, um, it's quite a gift when you have an opportunity to be able to put a seed in the ground and watch it grow. It's like, it's like magic. Yeah. It is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and Melanie, you are a wonder woman. You know, when you, when I had you send... <laughs> Did you girls hear that? I think my daughter <laughs> needs to hear that. <laughs> well, when you sent me, when I was like, okay, send me the bios, You've got so much going on. You're back in school again. Yeah. You're working on, you're getting a master's in what? In what sociology. You, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. tell me when you aren't, <laughs> when you aren't being a, a cannabis farmer and raising two beautiful daughters, what, what are I you, doing? what are you doing getting a master's in, in psychology? Sociology. Sociology. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go back to school. So I went back to school when my daughters were old enough. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I did. I went back to school and I got a degree in communication and I just wanted to keep going because I really appreciate and, and respect the information that um, is available. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, I'm just going for my master's and I'm going to, you know, see where it leads me. But just you're like, yeah, be a better human being able to be a better communicator and connector. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, try to understand some of these social structures and constructs that we find ourselves in and try to shift paradigms. I mean, it's just really interesting information because, yeah. you know, even thinking about just the cannabis in the thoughts around the cannabis, and this is a social construct, how we feel about it. And now we're seeing, it's evidence that structure, those constructs are changing. And so we're looking at cannabis different. So if we can just use, you know, that's just an example of what, what, what information and knowledge can do. Yeah. And how it can shift a consciousness around something that was once demonized. Absolutely. Is now celebrated. I mean, ah, oh, well, and it's beautiful. And it is the power of information and connection and communication. And these constructs were built mm -hmm. by us yep. so they can be destroyed and rebuilt Absolutely. by us. Absolutely. And they have to be. And yeah. the consciousness of this planet is in mm -hmm. process of raising. And right. I think that's where we find ourselves right now with everything going on in politics mm -hmm. and all these crazy things happening around the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, all that muck has to come up to the surface before we can... Right. 
see it to get rid of it once and for all, you know? You know, and it takes whether whether it's cannabis, it's it's walls being built. I mean, it's war. What it, if there's a shift in consciousness, right? It takes brave souls. It takes very courageous human beings to put themselves out there. And cannabis coming out as cannabis is is not big, can you know, compared to most things, but it's it takes a lot of courage to go, you know what, let's just be honest about our beautiful life. And there's going to be pressures, there's going to be flack, there's going to be kickback from a lot of individuals. But think about it, Craig, think about it, Mahalo and Josie. In a hundred years from now, it won't be a big deal anymore, hopefully. Yeah. And how rad is that going to be for so many people that they'll be going, can you believe that people were imprisoned yeah. over this? Uh-huh. Can you believe that people were kicked out of families because, you know, and and so let us be brave about it. You know, I mean, I get super emotional. Yes. But it really is that moment. And it was for us last November. Like, if we don't go out there and show the world that there are amazing, loving, good human beings that are not only growing this, but using this and supporting this and, and open to the knowledge and open to sharing that knowledge, who's going to do it? I yeah. mean, Preach. Well, that, that Preach. and to be able to be proud to be a cannabis farmer and for my daughters to be proud. This is so much damn hard work. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's no joke. Yeah. It's sunrise to sunset, sleepless nights. It. Mm-hmm. And sleepless nights are coming from compliance mm-hmm. and coming, you mm-hmm. know, all the regs changing on you. Um, and to be able to be proud of it and to be able to share it is absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think y'all are doing a fantastic job. And you're very inspiring. I'm so glad. And girls, I know you'd probably rather be down there making your potatoes. <laughs> At their little survival yeah, camp it, down it, by the pond. <laughs> yes. But I appreciate you sitting here and and talking with me and listening and hearing everything your super smart mom is saying because <laughs> she is so spot on. She is. <laughs> Y'all are very lucky girls. I'm sure you know that. Yeah, we're yes. pretty lucky, though, too. We've got some great kids and we're just thankful. We're thankful we're still here and we're still doing what we're doing. Yes. You know, so much, you know, so much talk of industry and facility. This isn't an industry or facility to us. This mm-hmm. is our life. Mm-hmm. This is our, our home. And this is our existence. And, you know, we're not at a point where we're making money. We're making a living. Mm-hmm. And that's all we're going to do for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, and that's always important. I I've been talking about that with everyone I've been inter- interviewing on this road trip. You know, they're like, I'm just hoping we break even this year. Like, you know, what everybody thinks cannabis is, mm-hmm. the industry, it's not like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm really happy to provide a platform so that we can showcase the normalcy of it. I mean, I grew up on a ranch in West Texas and, you know, it's not cannabis, mm-hmm. but it's the same lifestyle. Right. My dad, you know, during calving season, coming to wake one of us up and, you know, us taking turns getting up and going with our dad in the middle of the night to help deliver a calf or, Mm -hmm. you know, having to feed early in the morning. Or Mm -hmm. my dad's friend was like, oh, you have great soil for watermelons. And Mm -hmm. we're like, no, 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 please, please, please don't. Mm -hmm. And he plants watermelons. So then in the summer, that's our job. We're picking watermelons. (laughs) That's great. So, you know, I... I can totally appreciate what you're doing and where you're coming from and and your vision. And as we are seeking legalization across the country, like I hope I have a lot of listeners in Texas Mm -hmm. and in the Midwest. And it's just like I want them to hear this and Mm -hmm. understand that it's no different than these corn farmers or anything else. Well, you know, I think it's the media. And thank goodness that there's different sources and different lenses that, you know, partake in media and they explain things. But there is a definitely a lens at how people view growers and pot farmers and drug dealers. You know, the, the, it's, it's out there already. And so the only way that you're going to be able to shift it is if you show that it's not all like that. Yeah. And it's the same thing with, it doesn't matter what it is there's farming. You know, there's, there's farmers that are definitely demonized. And then you go out to another farm and 
it's the same crop and the same same everything, but it's it's celebrated. It's showing that there's a difference. There's an A to a Z yeah. in cattle farmers. There's an A to a Z in corn. There's an A to Z in cannabis, you yeah. know, and you can go to different farms and get a totally different view, a totally different way of growing, of harvesting, of processing, of, you know, and just showing consumers and yeah. showing an audience, showing people that are just interested that there's all different ways that people are doing this. Yeah. But there are really good humans out there that are farmers. Yeah. What's interesting is that we can go back to any sort of farming. It's a convention and it's it's a mindset. People have been so it's indoctrinated into what we believe how you farm things is that you do this and you do this and you do this. And if that doesn't work, well then you just throw this on there. And if that doesn't work, you throw this on there, you know, and it's stepping back and going, we're manipulating nature in a sense of what we're doing, but we, we've gone a step further and now we're just dominating it. And we're just trying to kill everything else around it so we can just focus on this one thing. And we've taken out all of the energy and the synergy around it. Yeah. And so I think the regenerative movement is, I, you can't, I mean, that's just a commodified word at this point, you know, it's just, you're going back to the way that things have grown naturally for right. thousands and thousands of years. Yeah. And I think as humans, I think we're just trying to go, how can we do this without messing anything up around us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, how do we do that? Because yeah. we, we, we as humans have a way of kind of... Yeah, just wrecking Mother okay, Nature's Okay, yeah, you're going to say it. Yeah, just, you know, when mm -hmm. it's like, if you just let things be, she'll show you how to do it. Yeah. You know? Well, and I do think that there is a level of science and education that needs to happen mm -hmm. to understand. I guess it's a lot like the entourage effect in cannabis. Mm -hmm. It's like these cannabinoids and these terpenes, mm -hmm. when they work in harmony, mm -hmm. this is how you're going to feel. Right. And so it's finding out, okay, like, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. What can I plant to mm -hmm. put nitrogen back in this right. soil? And so, right. you know, figuring out what are those things that are going to feed the soil while they're right. also feeding us? You know, but you need to be able to talk about what you're doing openly to get that knowledge sometimes. Yeah. You know, and so when you are closed yeah. and silenced, it's hard to access that knowledge authentically because you're so afraid of being prosecuted. And mm -hmm. so coming out, you're able to connect now with this whole new group of individuals that have this knowledge that you know that you've wanted and you were ready for, but you couldn't access because the ceiling's yeah. closed, the, mm -hmm. the door's locked, you know, you couldn't get to it. And now, you know, you have soil scientists coming in and water scientists coming in and, you know, you're talking to other farmers that are not cannabis farmers, but they're farmers and they're going, oh, well, you know what I've used? And you're going, oh my goodness, well, think, okay, this works to, yeah. and now we're all on the same wavelength we're all you know on the same platform almost that we can openly access this knowledge and pick each other's brains of what yeah. works and what doesn't work but you couldn't do that before yeah that is crazy so when did y'all shift into this regenerative format well it's been definitely a couple of years mm -hmm. and it's just the small it's it's been the slow transfer and i think what it's more of a building of soil, like, over the years. Yeah, well, that, yes, but when we could legally, in the sense, come out, we could put our roots literally in the ground. Yeah. You couldn't do that before because you were inside a forest. Yeah. In pots. Got it. Waiting any single moment. Yeah. For it to be taken. Right. So when, when it finally was accepted... And we were no longer going to be federally prosecuted for it. We were able to establish our roots permanently in the ground. Yeah. And that's when the regenerative movement for us, I feel, started. That's a double entendre, like being able to like firmly plant your right. roots as a family in this right. industry yes. and being able to literally yes. plant the roots in the ground. Yes. We didn't have to worry about moving mm -hmm. the smart pots. Yeah. You know, because we could we could we could finally relax and go, no, you know what, we live here. And this apple tree belongs here just as much as this belongs here, just as much as I belong here. Yeah. And we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to hide in the forest. We don't have to hide, you know. Yeah. Come here, puppy. T taco, is this it? Well, we do call him Taco, but his official name is Taku. But taku. <laughs> but for some reason, it Taku. Taco is better. <laughs> 
<laughs> turned into taco, which turned into taco shell, which has turned into taquito, which has turned into, <laughs> I don't know, taki. I want to name taki after the food, which is really amazing. Well, I think that it's the cutest thing because all pets end up having, you know, 50 names. The more names, the more love they have, right? Girls, will y'all take a picture so that I can add taco to the show notes? Oh, so cute. <laughs> Oh, good job. Can okay, you, sweet. I hope learning a thing or two about regenerative farming practices elevates your cannabis shopping experience. When we know better, we make better choices, right? If you're inspired by the Johnsons family and farming values, I encourage you to head over to the podcast 208 show notes and explore their life off the grid at Alpenglow Farms. You'll find pictures and videos of regenerative farming in action. And if you want to see for yourself with your own eyes, consider a casually baked day trip or retreat in the beautiful wine and weed country of Northern California. As your host and cannabis lifestyle guide, I've cultivated a one-of-a-kind farm stay experience and exclusive Emerald Triangle access. Enjoy the casually baked lifestyle and the magic of sun-grown cannabis farms and vineyards. So if you're into wine, weed, weather, wellness, or all of the above, get ready to have a high time customized just for you. Learn more and get pricing at casuallybaked.com backslash travel. That's casuallybaked.com backslash travel. And if you're picking up what I'm putting down, please rate and review the podcast wherever you listen. That one small action helps other canna curious folks find this highly responsible cannabis content. Cannonaut Becca recently wrote, quote, Joanna's skilled and edgy style of interviewing her guests weaves engaging conversation with salient facts. She draws candidly from her own life to overlay provocative examples to connect with the core essence of her guests' expertise. It's a fun and poignant romp through the various people and specialties in the plant medicine arena. Wow. Thank you, Becca, for appreciating my style and for taking the time to shout it out in such an articulate manner, I might add. As always, email your requests or can of curious questions through the website at casuallybaked.com. Or you can always DM me on social. I'm at Casually Baked on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and the WeedTube. And if you find value in the quality cannabis content I'm churning out every week, please become a podcast patron for $5 per month at patreon.com backslash casuallybaked. However you decide to play along in our community, thanks for doing your part to Puff Puff Pass It On. Casually Baked, the podcast was created, recorded, and produced by yours truly. Editing and sound design are in the capable hands of Arnav Gupta. The podcast theme music is by my highly talented friend, Seth Walker. If you aren't familiar with Seth's music, you can find High Time on his album, Gotta Get Back, wherever you're buying your music these days. I know he didn't create High Time for me, but it sure as shit sounds like he did, right? I hope you'll tune in next time. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you.